Hey everyone, my name is Shakarez and welcome to Liquid Analysis, a series that will be focused on taking a look and analyzing Team Liquid's players' games in Challenger solo queue. Today we'll begin with Quas's Swain, one of his most prominent champions since he's been part of the NA scene. So Swain was Quas's go-to champion back in the day when he was uh, still playing in Venezuela, and this had a lot to do with the ping he was playing with. Um, living in Venezuela, he was playing with 200 ping on the NA servers, so the champion's playstyle came very naturally for him and didn't require uh, too much of a high reaction time, since Swain is um, not that based around skill shots, his only skill shot is his never move, obviously a very um, integral, integral part of his, uh, of his kit, but not something that he absolutely needs all the time. The rest of his skills are targeted, which makes him a, a very easy champion to learn and to play at a very decent level. Now, this game Swain is playing, um, uh, Quas on Swain is playing against Nidalee, and he's using his AD runes even though he's playing against an AP champion, simply because Nidalee's damage, magic damage, pre-6 isn't going to be that strong, so he he prefers to run the AP per level and have a better, better strength in lane. Now, after that weird level 1, they go back to lane, and uh, Nidalee did use teleport, uh, Quas still has his, so that means that he'll have the advantage in the laning in case he gets pushed out. Now, talking a bit about the laning, um, Swain's laning is very basic. You basically don't want to push the lane, you don't want to use your skills on minions at all unless you're too far getting zoned and want to get some creeps um, when you're getting zoned by the opponent. Uh, what you do want to do is you want to pick up your... At level 1 you want to pick up your Torment, and basically your whole lane phase is going to be all about spamming those uh, torments on the enemy laner and while you're doing that try to get some last hits. Now last hitting a Swain is pretty hard, it does take a bit of practice to get there but uh, obviously Quas has already mastered that and every time Nidalee comes out of the brush you see him throwing a torment and um, it might not seem like it but it's actually quite a lot of damage and right here Nidalee tries to go for the all-in and uh, gets hit by the Torment, gets hit by the Decrepify, and uh, Quas sidesteps basically all of um, Nidalee's skills. He sets, sidesteps the Spear, sidesteps the the Pounce, so it avoids most of the damage and does quite a lot. And after the Lee Sin gank, uh, Nidalee's kind of on the back foot, and this is a perfect situation for, for Quas here. Where, when the lane is uh, pushed uh, towards him and at his tower, even though he's not the best CSer, so he wants to keep the lane out of turret range, but uh, pushed uh, pushed in enough so he cannot get ganked. Um, it's still a good uh, situation for him because it means that Chaco cannot gank him. And overall, as Swain, you want to really avoid those pre-6 ganks, which is uh, when you really can't turn the ganks around. Because after 6, Swain has actually one of the hardest champions to gank, Simply because if you don't have enough CC to lock him down and kill him immediately with burst, you'll probably die to his uh, uh, ravenous flock because it heals him so much that he's never going to go down. So right here, he gets ganked, he immediately realizes that and bursts down uh, the Nidalee and he dies for it. But obviously there he knew that he couldn't escape. Um, Nidalee has a lot of damage, Shaco has ignite, they can probably dive him so the best decision there was to get the kill and die. It's a one It's a one for one in a 2v1 situation, so it's favorable for Quas, and he still had teleport to come back to lane, whereas Nidalee had used hers at level 1. So, uh, pretty much a a good trade for, for Quas here, and he, he gets to back and get an, immediately catal an immediate catalyst, which is very important on Swain. So, moving on a bit to the, the item build. Um, basically, Quas's item build and Swain's item build specifically, is going to be revolved around one big core item, which is um, your Rod of Ages. You really need the Rod of Ages. It's one of those items that you really cannot change on Swain's build because you really need the mana. Because if you don't have the mana from Rod of Ages, you'll most likely run out very fast And uh, on, when you're using your Ravenous Flock, and it's really something you want to avoid. And right here, the all-in comes in, but uh, Quas gets level 6, and uh, he uh, Nidalee tries to heal back up, but there's no escaping the, the Swain. When he hits his never move, he gets to unleash his full combo, 
and uh, kills Nidalean. Part of the reason why he got to level 6 was because he got the first blood, which means he got the kill before dying. Nidalee only got the assist, and she was dead, so she didn't get any XP, whereas Swain got the full XP. And right here, uh, Nidalee uses Teleport to come back into lane, because she's uh, very behind right now. Um, yeah, before I talk about this, a uh, very interesting situation here is coming up and really showcases uh, strength, uh, Swain's strength in, the, in, a, in a gank situation, post-6. Basically, he, he gets 1v3'd, but he's not going down without a fight. He kills Swain, uh, he kills the Shaco, sorry, and then he kills Nidalee. And before um, dying to Fizz, he still flashes out, tries to make the plays, but ultimately he's out of mana, so uh, probably not the best idea to use that flash there. But overall, it's a, it was a 1v3, and he still got two kills b before going down. And basically, that's what happens when the enemy does not have enough burst to take you down. It, this is always going to happen. You're going to get um, absolutely demolished by the Swain's uh, healing power. Because it doesn't, it's not like he's not taking damage. The problem is he's healing that damage back very fast, and basically he's just able to to keep sustained and keep doing consistent damage with his ravenous flock. And this is where uh, Rod of Ages comes in, and this is why it's such an important item. Now, in this case, he's playing versus uh, double AP. Oh, and right here he catches the Nidalee with never move, and when you catch, uh, when you're in range to catch someone with never move, you can basically just fully trade. And he just kills Nidalee from 100 to 0 with uh, one full combo burst, which is uh, very surprising, but uh, something that Swain uh, does a lot if he manages to, to land his never move. So, talking a bit more about the item build, uh, he's playing this game against the double AP comp. So his second item after Rod of Ages is going to be an Abyssal Scepter, which is a very important buy and a very smart buy on him. His skills are mostly um, used in a, an aura range below 650, so this means that he'll always use the Abyssal Aura very well. Um, the other core item that Swain will almost always get, even if he's not facing an AD champion in lane, is Zhonyas, because it has a lot of synergy with his kit. You're able to unleash your full combo, and if you have your Ravenous Flock activated, you can use Zhonyas, and you'll keep healing while in Zhonyas, so it's very strong in that regard. Now right here, uh, he knows he's ahead, he's 5 kills up, he has his Roa stack, that means he's very tanky, and he tries to go for the dive, but unfortunately he does not manage there. What ends up happening is uh, he tries to predict the never move, but um, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't hit it, and uh, right here another gank comes in. This time he wasn't able to kill the Nidalee, and uh, Shaco, Shaco helping Nidalee there, and Nidalee grabs a kill to keep the lane a bit more even, but uh, Swain is pretty much getting away with this Swain pick. Um, Quas is getting away with this Swain pick, I mean, um, a lot, and he'll scale terrifically. So right here, he buys his boots, he gets a uh, Null Magic Mantle, which will build into that Abyssal Scepter, and uh, hopefully after that, he'll uh, start getting his uh, other core items like Sonya's. And at that point, he's a very... At this point, he's already a very strong bird, having... Uh, uh, the Roa already stacking from such an early point of the game is very important for Swain. And right here he just roams down, kills the Shaco. Nothing special. But I wanted to talk a bit more about uh, Quas's laning as Swain. Um, basically, you just harass with Torment, as I said before. And you save your other two skills for other situations. Now, never move. Before level 6, you won't be using it too much aggressively unless you know you can hit it and you can go for a really aggressive trade. If not, you want to basically just um, keep it for when a gank comes in. So when a gank comes in, you want to try to use Never Move defensively so you can back off. So that's the basic the, that's the basic use for Never Move you want to, pre-6. Post-6, you can use it more aggressively, but uh, take into account that if you use it aggressively and if you miss, uh, you're very open uh, towards getting ganked, and that's uh, a problem. Now, right here, Swain was uh, Quas on Swain was very smart. He waited for the Jinx to come in, and now decides to flank her. And this is a big team fight, actually. This is a a perfect uh, example of when Swain does well. Is he's not being focused too hard, 
So that means he's just walking around. People are focusing other targets. They were focusing the Mundo support and now uh, Stix A on Lee Sin. And basically, Quas is just running around with 100% HP and just killing everyone. Nidalee's doing little to no damage uh, because he already has that Null Magic Mantle. She d she only has a Morale Nomicon and he just uh, kills the Nami, turns on the on the Nidalee and uh, Lee Sin finishes up the kill. And this was three kills, two assists. And this was a free V5 for the most part, which is uh, pretty big for for uh, Quas there to be able to get three kills and two assists. It just allows him to scale phenomenally because uh, Swain, when he gets to snowball, he's a really strong champion. And basically, as long as you play the pre-level six safe and, and play your team fights correctly, you'll snowball immensely and do a lot of damage. So right there he gets his uh, Sorcerer's Shoes and his Abyssal Components. Really important to get those Abyssal Components because Fizz is actually quite fed. He's almost at the point of the Lich Bane. Oh, uh, just a reminder, I actually didn't mention it. This was before the Fizz uh, rework, so before he was played kind of like a Bruiser Jungle or, or Bruiser Top Laner. This was back when he was still played as a, a mid laner. But I still wanted to use this footage because I think it's one of uh, an example of what Quas is able to do on on one of his best champions and one of his most uh, uh, one of his most prominent picks in solo queue. So um, yeah, as I said, you really want to use your other two skills, so the the decrepify and the never move defensively when you're escaping from ganks. Other than that, you really would just want to spam torment in lane right here. Good teleport. He catches. Uh, he j basically flanks the the whole enemy team, and no one is organized here enough to basically grab the kills and uh, basically the the red team's decision here was to try to turn on the other other members before Swain gets all the kills but uh, Swain gets another double kill and he's now 11 kills in and he's absolutely carrying this game and he ends up carrying this game pretty hard uh, because he's able to to have this map presence after he has no he has snowballed and unless there's a lot of focus from the enemy team on this Swain they won't be able to kill him that fast and even if they do focus the Swain, uh, what ends up happening is the rest of the team is free to do whatever. And I'll remind you that there is also a Callista on uh, the blue side, which means if she's left untouched for the most of the team fight, she she's going to be a real problem. And right here, you just saw the, the potential and the strength of the Swain all in, basically just 100 to zero the Nami instantly. And now taking the tower. Nidalee Poke, as you can see, she's not doing much. She's trying to throw some spears, but it's not really doing anything uh, towards this very tanky Swain that already has a, an Abyssal Scepter. And so, um, speaking of uh, item builds, after going for the Abyssal, he'll probably uh, go get Azanias. It's a really important item on Swain. I've already explained the, um, the synergy that that item has with the the synergy that the item has with uh, with his ultimate and right here he, sh he just goes after the Nami unfortunately he's not able to kill her and then he's he has to face this Fizz that is actually pretty fed and he's not in the healthiest state he doesn't have enough mana to keep his Ravenous Flock up and one what ends up happening is he just dies because when you have no mana on Swain you're not able to proc that Ravenous Flock and um, you basically end up going down because you have no sustain so, uh, talking a bit more about his setup. Uh, in this case, he was using, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, he's using his runes versus uh, AD matchup because simply because Nidalee's pre-6 damage uh, isn't going to be that strong in lane. As long as you dodge those spears, it's not going to be too problematic. So he's using magic penetration marks, health per level seals, ability power per level glyphs, and ability power flat quintessences. Uh, which is pretty standard on Swain. Um, before he used to use um, hybrid penetration more, but he ultimately changed because he feels like he doesn't auto attack enough to warrant the uh, the need for it. So right here, another fight breaks out in another fight where uh, the re the enemy team is really focusing down the other members, and Quas is just able to get more and more kills, and he's already 15 kills up, half of his team kills. And he's getting very close to that Zonius, which is a very dangerous power spike for Swain. Especially considering he had to go for an Abyssal first. 
So, his other runes, the runes he runs when he's versus a, a more heavy AP matchup, is are basically the same. He just changes his ability power per level quint, uh, glyphs for uh, magic resistance glyphs, because he wants that early magic resistance versus uh, uh, tougher lanes that do a lot of magic damage. As for masteries, he usually runs 21-9-0, so not going for the 9 points in utility. Overall, uh, this is because you are getting a Rod of Ages, so you are getting a health item. So those points into defense that scale off of max HP are going to be very good. The 9 points kind of shore up his problems that he has pre-6. He's very vulnerable to gank, so that extra HP is going to be pretty good. And uh, as I said, the extra health, the maximum health, uh, is going to work very well with that Rod of Ages. The other big change on his masteries that you might notice is he's picking up that point in spell weaving, and basically this is a personal preference. I've seen Quas do it on a lot of champions, but one of the reasons why he's actually doing uh, this on Swain is so he can basically, if he does an auto auto E auto trade or auto Q something like that, he'll just gain a uh, an extra one percent damage. It is pretty easy to obtain, so. Uh, you don't lose n much by taking that point. He's basically using that point instead of using a point on um, Archmage, for example, or or on the CDR points. But he doesn't lose much uh, from that. And right here, uh, as I said, the very tanky Swain. He just doesn't care. Just kills the Nidalee, kills the Nami. He's on his, and as you can see, he's healing up here. But he gets uh, shut down by the Jinx. But three, uh, four people to kill him there which is quite a lot, and they still didn't manage to to take him down that fast because he was able to take two targets down. I believe there's only one death where Quas actually gets perfectly CC locked and killed 100 to 0, but it's very hard to do that when Swain gets his items. Now, right here, he's uh, waiting on a... I think he's waiting on a purchase here, and he's also looking at the map. So right there... He sells his uh, Doran's shield, uh, his Doran's uh, ring, sorry, and he buys a blessing on, and he immediately teleports in, and he finds all these low targets. This is pretty much the perfect situation for, for Swain. He catches the Jinx. Nidalee tries to go in to finish him off, not going to work. Swain is still pretty healthy. Uh, the Morale Nomicon is coming in, and the Morale Nomicon is one of the items that really ruins Swain's day. But before that, that actually can come in. Swain is already killing everyone, so it's not too problematic. Right here, Fizz tries to go in and gets absolutely demolished by Swain. He is very fed right now. He is close to his uh, Void Staff or his Death Cap, depending on where he wants to go. And um, at this point, it's really scary to play against uh, such a fed Swain. Uh, so, as I said, his core build is going to revolve around the Rod of Ages and uh, the Xhanias. Zhonya's is usually built second or third, depending on the comp you're playing against. If you're up against a very heavy AP comp, obviously Abyssal is going to be the, the best option. And right there he gets uh, chunked by uh, Jinx, and basically he probably underestimated Jinx's strength and ends up dying. But um, after he gets his uh, Rod of Ages, he'll go for Abyssal or Zhonya's. Against AP, he'll probably get the Abyssal first and leave Zhonya's for third. Um, I know he's not the biggest uh, the biggest advocate of going Spirit Visage, but it's also a very situational item you can go for if you're playing against a very heavy AP team. So say you're playing against a double AP composition, or their jungler is also AP besides their laners, or you're also playing against a Corky. When you have a lot of magic damage on the enemy team, you can go for that uh, spirit visage, but it's something that I know he doesn't. He isn't the biggest advocate of. After going, after getting his abyssal, and usually he'll get his uh, Zonius if he hasn't already, because it's an item that really gives him a lot and really has a lot of synergy with his ultimate. And for late game items, he'll be focusing on the other AP items. Uh, pretty standard. He'll get his void stuff. He'll get the Rabadon's death cap, and. If he didn't go for the Abyssal Scepter, so if he doesn't need the MR and if he went straight into Zhonya's for his second item, he'll go for a Rhyolize, which is a very strong item on, on uh, Swain as well. Even though most of his skills are AoE, uh, basically having a Ravenous Flock that is constantly slowing is very strong, and a Torment 
is also going to give you a 35% slow because it's a single target ability. Now right here they get to, to siege this turret after getting a pretty good team fight. You saw there that uh, he used his Zhonyas before pretty well and basically avoided most of Fizz's damage and was able to just sustain while he was in the Zhonyas come out and his targets were already dead because of the team took care of it. And right here he goes onto the Nami, almost kills her but unfortunately doesn't have flash to finish off the job and right here red team does try to uh, blue team just try to finish too too uh, prematurely and does pay for it and this is one of the situations where everything goes down really really poorly when you're not able to to get onto your targets as swain it's really problematic so right there in that team fight everyone was scattered and Red Team was able to run after each target and ignore the Swain who was just getting kited around. And when that happens, it's really problematic for a champion like Swain because he has no gap closers. He didn't even have Flash in that in that uh, team fight, so it was really problematic. With Flash, he would have maybe uh, finished off one or two kills. And Red Team was able to get the the Baron. Now, right here, he after buying the the Zhonyas and the, the Death Cap, he buys another new CLR Rod, and this was basically, I think the idea here was to finish off the game, try to finish off as soon as possible, because so much AP means you'll do more damage to structures, and the game's almost over, one inhib is down, one Nexus turret is down, there's a naked inhib, and the red team is basically fully pushed, but the problem here is they're trying to go without their full team, and um, Swain ends up being comboed here, Perfect bubble into the, the Chompers and into the Nidalee Spear and he gets comboed down and killed. And you'll notice that when he comes back he'll sell that needlessly large rod and get a Giant's Belt. Which would be probably built into the Rhyolite as I talked about. Uh, right here in this scenario he really doesn't need the Void Staff. He can, he can get it later into the game by selling one of his items. But he doesn't need it that early into the game because if you look at the enemy team none of them really have... Uh, a significant uh, MR item that will stop from him from doing his damage because he already has Sorcerer Shoes and Abyssal Scepter. So right here he reses and basically decides I'm going to backdoor this ex peque style, goes in, takes the turret, basically combos the Nami. Uh, the red team is trying to uh, come back but Swain is going to, Quas is going to finish this game on Swain with, with style. So yeah, Quas picks up that win on 23-8-6 uh, and six Swain, a very strong game on him. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, first episode of Liquid Analysis. For next episode, we'll be taking a look at Phoenix on one of his uh, best champions. And yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode. And if you have anything to say or give me critique, please leave it below in the comment section. And I'll see you guys next time.